All right, so we got a quick little word problem, quick little calc application. At time t equals zero, a diver jumps from a platform diving board that is 32 feet above the water. Oh, there's a picture. We'll draw the picture. The position of the diver is given by that formula, where s is measured in feet, t is measured in seconds. When does the diver hit the water? What is the diver's velocity at impact? So this is almost an Algebra 2 problem, to be honest, except for B. Part A is an Algebra 2 problem. Part B is not an Algebra 2 problem, but it can be done decently by an Algebra 2 student. So let's see how it's going to go. So let's draw the picture first, just so we have a, a, good, a good idea. So we got our diving board. Um, that color-ish, right? That's probably the closest notability is going to have to a diving board color. And it's 32 feet above the board. 32 feet above the ground. Or above the water. There's our water. And we got a diver up here. A little diver. And their position is going to be given by that equation. And so we just want to know when they hit the water. So here's the main question. This... So picture how the diver's going to go. The diver's going to look something like that, right? So for one thing, you don't need to know this because they tell you it here, but anything that's going through the air is always going to follow a parabola shape. That's the idea. So I guess to be more specific here, this is just talking about a straight up and down, but you kind of see how if they go just out a little bit, how that's going to be a parabola. So... Here's the idea of what you would do here. You would say, this equation is giving us the height, right? That's what they tell us. The position of the diver, meaning the position of the diver above the water. And so the question then is, what is the position of the diver here when he hits the water? Zero. So if we make this position, we set this position equal to zero, That'll allow us to find the time that he hits the water. So we set that entire equation equal to zero, and now we just got to solve for t. And if you realize quickly that all of these are divisible by 16, that's going to make life a whole lot happier for you, because you can just divide everything by 16, so it becomes positive t squared minus t minus 32 divided by 16, 2. And so we have that equals zero. And then now, quick factor, quick factor. It's only two numbers that multiply by two, so you should be fast with that. X minus two, X plus one equals zero. And then so where does he hit the ground? We keep solving for X. I guess for T is what it really should be. We get T equals two and T equals negative one. And so what does that tell us? That tell us tells us that he's going to hit the water at T equals two and t equals negative 1. Why t equals negative 1? Well, that's just going backwards in the function. So if, like, you know, he's going like this, that's the path of his dive. So if we tried to go back in time and picture him, like, falling towards the water, that's where he would hit. That's what that negative 1 is. But, of course, we don't actually care about that because that's not real. He's only going to hit the water at time equals 2. That's the Algebra 2 problem. I've, give that, I've given that to Algebra 2 students plenty of times. Now, B, what is the diver's velocity at impact? That's a calc problem. But if you're in calc, this should be pretty easy. And if not, I can show you how to do it. So we got to just take the derivative. Because the derivative of position is velocity. So let's write our new velocity equation, which will just be the derivative. And we're just going to use the power rule here to take the derivative. So that just means when we use the power rule, we're going to take this number to the front and multiply it. So I'll write it all out. We're going to have 2 times negative 16. And then we decrease the power by 1. So the power was 2. We're going to decrease it by 1. Now it's just t to the 1. Same thing on the next one. So right now the power is 1. You're moving the power to the front. So you're just multiplying by 1. And you're decreasing the power by 1. So the power was 1. We're going to decrease it by 1 to make it 0. 
And then the 32 actually just goes away. When we take the derivative of a constant, it just goes away. And so you just simplify this a little bit. If I was doing this myself, of course, I would have just immediately written it simplified. But negative 32t plus 16. That is our velocity. So now that's an equation where we can just get our speed by plugging in the time. So interesting how when you plug in time equals zero, you see you're starting going 16, what is it, meters per second or feet per second. But that makes sense because you're catapulting off the diving board. But what we care about is the speed at time equals 2. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to plug in t equals 2. We're going to say a v of 2 is negative 32 times 2, negative 64, plus 16. And then negative 64 plus 16, that's like 64 minus 16. So that's like negative 48. So how is our velocity negative? Why is our velocity negative when we hit the water? Well, because a negative velocity just means you're going down. A positive velocity would mean you're going up. So it makes a lot of sense that she's going down at negative 48 feet per second when she hits the water. That's fast. That's very fast. But that makes sense.